34, verses 1 through 8. And it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. And their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out. And the Lord heard him and delivered him. blessing us again to make it to the house of prayer. God, we thank you for keeping us, Father God, as only you can keep us. Lord, we honor you today. We worship you today. We glorify you today. We say peace and honor to you, Father God, for you are worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. God, we've come to lift you today. We, we've come to magnify you today. Lord, we to, to glorify you for you are the only word in God. God, we thank you for giving us another chance. Lord, we can't even tarry in your sight, but, but God, your mercy and your grace has given us another chance. And, and we thank you this morning, Father God. We, we bless your name. We, we didn't have to be here, but you afforded us another chance, Lord. And Lord, we thank you. In the midst of danger, seen and unseen, Father God, you have kept us and given us another chance. And for that, Lord, we say hallelujah to your name. We, we glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you, Father God, for there is none like you, Father. You are good. You are God. You are God all by yourself. Lord, we praise you today, Father. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sin, for we've fallen short, we messed up. Father God, we have not set the stage for blessings, but Lord, we know in your forgiveness you will set the stage for us. And for that, Father God, we're thankful. Now, Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless us in this place. Lord, have your way, Lord. Do what you do again, Father God. Bless as only you can bless again, Father God. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless us, Father, be, to be open to who you are, to be available to do what you would have us to do, to bless you, Father God, in the midst of our service. Now, we ask you, Father God, to arrest our hearts and arrest our minds, to bless us, Father God, to focus on you and you alone, that old habits will be thrown away and old burdens will be rolled away, that we will be better at 1 o'clock than we were at 10 o'clock, that we will run and tell men, women, boys, and girls about this God we serve and how mighty and how powerful you are. Lord, we ask you to bless us in this place to hear from you, Father God. Rescue me from me. Hide behind, hide me behind the Holy Spirit that he will stand and teach and preach your word, that all habits will be lost, Father God, and that we will run and tell men and women about your goodness. And Lord, we ask you to have your way. Bless the Holy Spirit to rip and run through the room. Bless your Holy Spirit to produce what he would have produced in us, Father God. Bless us, Father God, to be humble enough to hear from you and be blessed by you. It's in the precious, mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. In this name we pray. Amen.
celebrate that Jesus, yes. whose blood is powerful. Yes. Oh, yes. His blood is promising. Yes. His blood is preserving. Yes. And we've come to worship him because we realize that it was the blood of Jesus yes. Yes. that washed us, yes. that cleansed us, and made us whiter than snow. Thank God for the blood. If it had not been for his blood, our blood won't do. If it had not been for his blood, our bloodstream wouldn't be clean. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. It is his blood that will never lose. Lose his power. Call your attention again to the book of Revelation in the back of the Bible. The book is Revelation. Chapter 7, verses are 12 through 17. Revelation chapter 7, verses 12 through 17. In the New Testament, all the way back to the Bible, the book is Revelation chapter 7, verses 12 through 17. You will find it, let's look at 11 through 17. When you found it, you will discover these words. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God. Saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered saying to me, who are these arrayed in white robes and where did they come from? And I said to him, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sat on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them by day, nor the heat, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Amen. I want to talk about God's preserved people. All right. God's preserved people. Let me begin by reminding you we're still in the book of Revelation. Therefore, we're still looking at the future. And as we look at the future, these events have not taken place, but the prophet John, the apostle John, is getting a word from the Lord. These days, preachers will remind you every now and then that they have a rhema word from the Lord. Let me just say to you today, the apostle John is getting a real word an unspoken word from the Lord. A word that has never been spoken before. He is receiving revelation on the island of Patmos. He has already revealed before us that the seals will be opened. And no one is worthy to open the seal but Jesus himself. All right. John speaks to us from the island called Patmos, an island that is just about eight miles wide, about 10 miles long. And I told you before, there was nothing exciting going on on Patmos. 
Patmos was the lonely island that John had been exiled to because of his belief in God for his testimony and for the blood of the Lamb. And because of the word of God. So here is John on this lonely island. No organ there, no drum there, no guitar there. There is not a lead guitar, not a bass guitar there. There is no saxophone or a trumpet there. But John says he was in the spirit of the Lord on the Lord's day. And he heard a great voice behind him saying, what you hear, write it and put it in the book and send it to the, the seven churches of Asia Minor. Yes, sir. In chapter 6, we, we, realize, we realize that there are four horsemen there. Mm -hmm. And we realize that there are some things going on that we don't want to be present when they're going on. All right. I already said to you in chapter 4, we don't have to really worry about what goes on in chapter 6. Because in chapter 4, John looked in heaven and he saw great heaven. He saw one sitting on the throne, and the one sitting on the throne is God himself. All right, all right. And he paints a vivid picture of a church service or a worship service, if you may have, happening, taking place in heaven. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, before we get to chapter 5 and chapter 6, I want to make sure that I'm in chapter 4. Where the throne of God is occupied by God and the four elders around the 24, rather, the 24 elders around the throne of God worshiping him and calling to him and praising him. And then the four living creatures, we call the four beasts, the four beastly creatures are around the throne and they're doing the same thing, worshiping God. It sends a message to us this morning that the God we serve, the God who sits on the throne, is worthy to be worshipped. He sends a message to us this morning and said, if things are not going your way, God is worthy to be worshipped. All right, all right. He sends a message to us this morning that if things are all right or all right, then let me tell you, God is worthy to be worshipped. It sends a message to us this morning when we got everything going right. right. We got, we got the, the spouses in check. Uh, the children are doing things like they ought to do. And everything is ticking well on my job. I got a lot of money in the bank. My 401k is not being jeopardized. And let me tell you, nobody's stealing my money. No one is hacking into my, my internet. And no one is hacking and taking money out of my bank. Then you ought to also praise the Lord. The one who sits on the throne, God himself, is worthy mm. to be praised. I said to you, I said to you that there are some, some soldiers under the altar. Mm. There are some who have been martyred uh, by, by those who didn't believe in Christianity or will not believe in Christianity. This is during the great tribulation. It's after the church has been raptured out of here. I want to remind you again that the, the author is not talking about you if you're born again. But I want to also remind you, if you're not born again, this could be you. But why wait around to the great tribulation? Why wait around when you can't get food? Why wait around when bloodshed is all around us? Why wait around when, when we can't have enough money to spend just to buy wheat? Let me tell you, you don't have to wait around. You don't have to wait on the pale horse to ride when, when his rider is death and the one that follows close behind him is Hades the grave. You don't have to see any of those, these things. You don't have to be present doing this. But I just want to warn you, things going to get bad. All right. All right. We think right. things are bad now. Things are really going to get bad. Yeah, you don't have to wait around. We think COVID-19 was most devastating to us in the 21st century. You don't have to wait around to diseases are running rampant and out of control. Yeah. You can get out of here, yeah. but you must be. You've got to be. You have to be born again. All right, when we look at the text, remember the, the, the martyrs are under the altar crying out, God, how long? <laughs> how long are you going to let my enemies just run around and do what they're doing? Mm -hmm. And the answer is one that they did not want to hear. The answer was, just a little while longer. Just hold on. In other words, it's not now. And not only does he say it's not now, he also says to us that 
There are some more people that got to be killed for the sake of God. There are some more martyrs got to, that martyring got to take place. There are some more people that will stand for the word of God. And when we get to the end of chapter 6, the question becomes, who will be able to stand? Chapter 7 opens up. Chapter 7 takes a break from the opening of the seal. After he opens up this seal, and then chapter 7 comes in and takes a break from the seal opening process. I would have called this intermission, but in, in a, intermission, but it's not intermission because when you take intermission in the in the four, after the second quarter, you go into the fourth, the third, and the fourth quarter, you look forward to victory. But let me tell you, he just takes a break. After he opens up the sixth seal, he doesn't open up seal number seven until later. But in between the sixth and the seventh seal, he focused again on heaven. And he, he paints a picture. He says in chapter seven, he says, there are angels that are holding up the judgment. There are angels. It says it, says it like this, that these are the angels who are standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, that the wind shall not blow on the sea, that the wind shall not blow on any of the trees. This wind, this wind is, is a symbol of judgment that is yet to come. We thought that when he took out the fourth of the earth, it was a big deal. But the more seals that are open, the more dangerous it becomes. The more destructive, the more devastating it becomes. Let me just say to you, it's going to get bad. I mean, it's going to get worse than the stock market dropping out. It's going to get worse than the Great Depression. In the great tribulation, it's going to get so bad until chapter 7 says that God is going to have mercy. He says, don't harm the earth, don't harm the sea, don't harm the trees until the servants of the Lord have been sealed in their foreheads. I just want to tell you today, even when we're disobedient, God is still merciful. Even when we try to do it our way, God still have mercy on us. Even when we determine that we know better than God knows, and even when we will not agree with what God says, God is still merciful. Has God been merciful to you today? Yes. Has God given you another chance when you don't deserve it? How many of you just deserve another chance? And you knew when you woke up this morning that God was going to wake you up this morning. Let me tell you, the alarm clock went off for somebody this morning, and they didn't get up. But God's mercy gave us another chance. Do you ever just stop for a moment and say, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, God. God, I don't have everything I want, but God, you've been merciful to us. God, you have been kind to us. God, we don't deserve it, but God, you just keep right on blessing us over and over and over again. Because God has not given us the justice that we deserve. You see, we fight for justice. Yeah. But you really don't want justice. Mm. You, you really can't stand justice. You really can't take justice. And you cannot take the judgment. So God in his mercy holds off his judgment. And he tells them to wait mm. until those who have won the victory, done during the great tribulation, those who have, have been sealed with the sign of God in their forehead. Hold on. God preserves his people. God has a way of preserving us and keeping us in spite of us. Big Mama was here. She would say, boy, God has, has kept you through danger, seen and unseen. On our way back in last night, I mean, on our way back in, it was daytime, but it looked like night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Storming and raining, and when we when we, we came up down a, a one-way highway, there was a car facing us. Mm -hmm. I know. 
So the wild guy car sitting on the side of the road, he lost control in the middle of the storm. And I just want to tell you this morning, it could have been me. But God's mercy and God's grace stayed the hand. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter if you got an all-wheel drive or a two-wheel drive. God can keep you from hydroplaning. And matter of fact, when you realize you're hydroplaning, the hydroplaning is already over. He, he keeps you in danger, seen and unseen. When you realize that your car is jerking, it's because your car has just touched dry pavement and you've been floating on the water all this time and God's mercy has kept you. I want to tell you this morning, God's mercy is keeping us. It's not because we're so holy. It's not because we're so good. It's not because we've been baptized. It's not because we've been saved. It's because God's mercy keeps us. And he keeps us even when we don't deserve it. Even when we, we ought to be taken out. The Bible says, the Bible says that the angels are sitting on the four corners of the earth, they are standing and they are holding back the wind, holding back the judgment of God until they are sealed. The servants of God are sealed in their foreheads. Verse number four it says, and I, I heard a number of those who were sealed. Was 144,000. Now the Jehovah's Witnesses and others have run with this. Somewhere, somebody, and all you have to do is read the Bible. It says, look, look at what it says. It says, it says, it says, it says in verse number four, it says, I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. That Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you and try to make you believe that the only people going to heaven are the 144,000 that have been, been chosen by God before the beginning of time. I stop by to tell you that this 144,000 are only the children of which Israel. Why do I say that? Because it says it in the text. Yeah, right. And we ought to say what it says in the text. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you still got a chance. We, we still need to tell people about Jesus because we still have a chance. They still have a chance. Anybody you meet still, stop this malarkey about 144,000 are going to heaven and that's all that's going to be in heaven. And he goes down the road. He calls the road of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he calls the road and he says over and over again, 12,000 from this tribe, 12,000 from that tribe, 12,000 from this tribe until he covers all of them, yeah. of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. 144,000. Now you know that this is not all that's going to be in heaven because our salvation would be in vain. Because they will tell you that, that the upper echelon has already been chosen. Well, why are we going through the motions? They will tell you that God has already chosen them. And guess what? Some Baptist people believe it. Some Methodist, Methodist people believe it. Some Catholics believe it. So they do their own thing their own way because they say, what use? But it says in the text that these are those who of every tribe of the children of Israel, 12,000 from each tribe. So God... Even in the great tribulation, God has mercy and does not judge yet. Thank you, Lord. We have a merciful God. Yeah. If I would just testify myself, I would tell you I don't deserve to be here. And God knows, and most of you know, I don't deserve to stand here. But it's only because of God's mercy. When Jephthah was running my way, mercy stepped in the way and said, no, not now. All right. When judgment was falling upon me, justice put an umbrella, and justice was coming to take me out, but mercy put an umbrella over my head. Thank you. Thank you. God's mercy will keep them then, mm -hmm. and his mercy is keeping us now. We don't deserve it. We, we, don't, we can't brag about it. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved. 
Doesn't matter what, what church you've been to. Doesn't matter what church you belong to. It doesn't matter what your position in church. God's mercy is why we're here. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Wait down and hold back. Hold back the wind. Hold back the destruction. Hold back the judgment. The word seal means that they've been under God's ownership. And they're under God's authority. When God put the seal of approval on their forehead, now they already did. They, they, they already messed up. But hold back the judgment. Until the seals are planted on their foreheads. And I'm telling you, we serve a merciful God. The next thing the word seals means is victory. In other words, they may kill my body. But they can't kill my soul. Come on now. <laughs> they may take you out because they don't agree with you. But God gives you the victory through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Things may be going pretty rough for you now. Mm -hmm. Students in school, teachers may not be teaching for the sake of children learning. But you get the victory. Yes. Do your work. Yes. Be on time. Yes. Be early. Sit in your seat. Make sure you pay attention. It doesn't matter who else is acting a fool. All right. Let them be. Be a nerd because they call a nerd 10 years from now, boss yeah. man, yeah. boss <laughs> woman. And women are writing books all over the world now because they paid attention in school. Mm -hmm. And they're throwing their jacket over their shoulder and they're walking there strutting because now that nerd is the boss. All right. All right, man. Young people, don't give in to pure pressure. Don't give in to pure pressure. Make sure that you do what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, at the time you're supposed to do it. Pray that God helps you through it and make sure, very sure, that you are in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. All right. All right. And then through it all, honor God. Mm -hmm. Through it all, give God the glory. Through it all, make sure you pay attention. Make, make sure you have respect. Yes. So there's 144,000 are present here. This seal represents ownership and God's authority. Mm -hmm. God has given us authority in the earth. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we walk according to the authority that God has already given us. Mm -hmm. I, I, I used to drive a 455 engine, Buick LeSabre. And boy, every now and then I hit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when Daddy found out I hit it one time, he didn't ask any questions. He, just, he didn't make any statements. He just reached out his hand. And I didn't have to say anything. He, he, he took my authority. He took the keys. And he reminded me, I don't buy this car. He does. He reminded me, you don't buy the tires, I do. And he reminded me, when the car loses control, then you won't get it out the ditch, I will. He said, when you get your own, you can run it any kind of way you want. That's right. And then that wasn't true either, because even when I got mine, he told me what I better not do with it. <laughs> it's because he had authority. Yeah. Authority yeah. was in his hand. He, he deserved, he had ownership. I'm saying to you today, we have authority that God has granted us, and we need to use that spiritual authority yes. that God has given us. Yes, the authority is in his word. We understand his word. Mm -hmm. When the devil comes upon us, we need to recite to the devil God's word. God's right. The devil is not the devil is not frightened because you saved, sanctified, and filled with his precious Holy Ghost. <laughs> Matter of fact, you can decree and declare all you want to. Many times the decree in the crime is extra biblical. Mm -hmm. We need to walk in his blood. Walk in his so the 144,000 is of the nation of Israel. Then in verse 9 he says, After these things I looked and behold a great multitude. No one could number this multitude. 
And then because of the children of Israel has been mentioned in the 144,000, he lets us know that they're not going to be the only ones on the scene. He says, there's a great multitude that no man could number from all nations, from every tribe, from all people, with all tongues, meaning all languages, standing before the throne of God and before the, the, the Lamb himself, clothed in white robes. I mean, I mean, I know you shouted about it. I, I know you've gotten excited about the fact that not only 144,000 will be in heaven. I know you've shouted because there's a great multitude that no man can number, but this is not you if you're saved. All right, all right. I just bust somebody sanctified bubble. Listen, this is forecasting. This is the ones who came out of the great tribulation. If you're saved, if you're born again, you won't see the great tribulation. These are the ones who stood steadfast in the midst of killing, in the midst of murdering. The Bible says there was a number that will come out that no man can number. It says a, a great multitude of these, that, and they had on white robes before they were clean. <laughs> and we shout about it. I, I heard Brother Priest's first sermon, and, and man, people shouted all over the place. Because they thought this was them in that moment. But these are not those who are born again during the church age. The church age is the age in which we are living in today. And during this church age, we better get it right now so we won't see the great tribulation. He says, no man can number, and they had on white robe, and they had palm branches in their hands. And look at what they cried out. They cried with a loud voice. They, they shouted with a loud voice. They celebrated with a loud voice. They prayed with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. This great multitude was from every voice, every nation, every tongue, and they were praising God, and they were in unison. God delivered me from church folk that can't get into praise. We have to get into praise. We have to, you know, and brothers, let me tell you, I know you're cool, you suave, and you dress well, but you got to get into praise with the Lord that got you dressed all like right, that. All right. We have to make sure that if we have an emotional moment on our job, an emotional moment at our house, emotional moment at the game, we ought to be able to have an emotional moment in the presence of God. We ought to praise Him. Look at what they said. They, they said salvation belongs to him in the Lamb. If it proves the point that Paul talks about in the book of Romans, that salvation is from God through Jesus Christ. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, he says that we are, we are saved by grace right. through faith. It is right. not of ourselves. It is a thing that God does. Right. And he goes on to say we can't even brag about it. We can't, you know, we can brag. Church folks know they can brag. I mean, they can put on what they want to have on. And they can they can walk like this. And you ought to walk with your head up. You ought to walk with your, your shoulders back. Young people, stop holding your head down like you got nowhere to go. You ought to be proud of the God who has made you who you are. But make sure you give all honor and all glory unto God because he's the one who keeps these angels knew who it was. The angels said, oh, salvation belongs to God. Oh, not only does salvation belong to God, it belongs to the Lamb of God. Jesus, who died on a cross. Jesus, who they buried in a barbed tomb. Jesus, that got up early that third day morning. He bought us with his blood. Amen, amen. I'm getting excited about that. And it doesn't matter if you used to be a clubber or not. It doesn't matter if you used to be a drug addict or not. It doesn't matter if you used to be a prostitute or not. It doesn't matter if you used to be involved in same sex or not. God saved you. He rescued you. Matter of fact, he rescued you from you. You see, people, people think that drug addicts, drug dealers, prostitutes, homemongers, 
same uh, lesbian activity and homosexual. We have come to the conclusion that's the only sin. I sit, I sit in a seminary class, and one of the students told the professor, I was just a visiting professor. But I was so embarrassed to be his professor. I sit in a seminary class, and then the guy, we were talking about apologetics. And apologetics is when you argue the faith. It is when you defend the faith, defend what God has said, and tell, make sure that men, women, boys, and girls are, are reading the word and understanding it well. It was the apologetics class. And all of a sudden, I could clear blue. He said, well, 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 brother professor, well, you know, God will forgive you from everything but the unforgivable sin. Unforgivable sin. He said, well, brother, this, this is a pastor. That means he leads people. Mm. That means people are following him. And he has a great following. Mm. So the professor said, well, what is the unforgivable sin? And all of us braced ourselves because we just knew he was going to say blasphemy, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. We thought he was going to say rejection. He said the unforgivable sin, brother professor, is homosexuality. Mm. I was so tempted just to black my face out. And just fall on the floor. <laughs> Throw up my hands and just hop. Because this is a pastor who's been leading people, who's been beating up homosexuals and lesbians from the pulpit. And when we as preachers sometimes get messed up too. I want to tell you today what you understand very well is only God's amazing grace that has kept me. It's not because, it's not because I made all the right choices. Yeah. It's not because I've done everything right. Yeah. It's because of God's amazing grace that saw fit to pick me up out of the murky mouth. Yeah. 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 Our first few years of marriage, Sister Davis would go back home and listen to all that trash my brothers and sisters would tell her about me. <laughs> it was trash, even though it was true. <laughs> They didn't have to bring that up. This girl could have walked off and left me before we said I do. They just piled on all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But thank God for his mercy. Yes, Lord. I mean, they told her what I did growing up. They told me how I handled myself growing up. And her only statement was, if I had known you then, I wouldn't even take a second look at you. <laughs> I said, well, thank God, thank God. for his amazing grace. Yeah. They went on to tell her how daddy used to come get out of trouble and I, I used to worry mama. I said thank God for God's amazing grace. Yes, yes. And she didn't make it any better. Man, I wouldn't even take a smell at you. <laughs> we have come to the conclusion in the church that because we don't do it, then it's only thing that is sin is what they do. We have to come to the conclusion that all have sinned, not y'all have sinned. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. And even as we sit with our proud self, we're in the midst of sin. The text, the text declares that they realized where salvation came and they gave all glory to God. As you are blessed by God, you need to give God the glory. As God affords you another chance, you need to give God the glory. Yes. As God allows you to do things that you do, you need to give all glory to God. Mm -hmm. I, I just hate, I just hate to hear phony preachers. Mm -hmm. When people walk up and say, say, man, you sure did preach well today. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I try. Mm -hmm. I know that's right. Faith phony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not giving God the glory. That's you ought to at least ask them to pray for you that you don't get high, mighty, and lifted up. Yes, yes. You ought to at least give God the credit and tell him to God be the glory. Yes. I tell him hallelujah to the lamb yes. that has been yes. slain from the foundation of the world. Yes. Yes. When you teach a good word, mm -hmm. make sure you give God the glory. Right. When you praise them and give glory to God, make sure you give God the glory. Mm -hmm. One of the things that turned me off about musicals I went to a musical one night, and I was the sound man. And so the sound man get to hear stuff when people come back off the stage. 
I was at this musical one night, and I was running the sound, and I was so impressionable. impressionable. And they, this, this group came off the stage, and they came backstage, and they were just laughing, and they were talking, and people were still out there shouting off their last song, and one of them made the statement, girl, then we shout on the day. Oh, Lord. We have to give God the glory for what he allows us yeah. to do. We have to give God the glory for, for what God allows us to do in people's lives. We have to give God the glory because if we don't give God the glory, he can snatch it away from us. Yes, he can. One of those same sisters got throat cancer. Mm. One of those same sisters just dried up like a poem. When you look at Acts chapter 12, right around verse 21, the Bible says that Herod got up one day and made a great oration, made a great speech. And when he spoke, the people said, this must be a God, this not a man. And the Bible says, because he did not give God the glory, the worms ate up his body and he gave up the glory. Angels got it right here. The angels began to praise God and thank Him for salvation. And look at how it flows. It's they, 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 they say salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and, and to the Lamb Himself who died for us. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders stood around the throne, and the four living creatures stood around the throne, and they bowed their faces before the throne and worshiped God. You have to lose yourself sometimes. Stop worrying about how you look to people. Mm -hmm. Stop worrying about what people are going to think of you. Yes, Lord. That means you're too proud. You're too lifted up. When you start being more concerned about what people think of you than you are about praising and bowing down before God. Let me tell you, every now and then the church ought to catch on fire, catch yeah. on fire. The church ought to catch on fire. Yeah. Every now and then, somebody on your road ought to, ought to get in praise. And look what happened. The Bible says that when they praise the Lord, the angels begin to pray. Yeah. Then the four yeah. beasts and the creatures yeah. begin to pray. Yeah. Then the 24 elders begin to pray. It was a concert of praise, yeah. giving honor to the Lord. Yeah. What would happen? What would happen if we all got on one call? Yeah. And we all just praise the Lord. Yeah. Forget what we have on, forget who's with who. Forget what people are wearing. Forget what, what your hairdo is like today. Just get on one accord. Yes. And pray. Matter of fact, if we get on one accord and praise God, God can bless us beyond measure. Yes. And the God that we serve, he can bless us collectively. Yes. And God can bless us individually. Yes. That's why you don't have any place to get upset with people when they're blessed by God. It's just telling you that God's in the neighborhood and just a moment before he walks around the block. Let me tell you, matter of fact, God is all places at the same time. And He, we say he walks around the block, but really he's already there. And he's passing out blessing every single day. Say that, say that. The angels saying, amen. <laughs> they got to tell you, let me tell you, that's church talk. In church, in, in, in church, we don't say, hey, dog, let's get it done, dog. In church, we say, amen. amen. That, means, that means it is so. It says, amen, that means I'm agreeing with you. Amen. We say a lot of things in church, but, but when we say, amen, that's saying, I'm with you, brother. Yes, yes. I agree with you, sister. Yes. It is so. That's what God says. That's what God means. Yes. So they says, amen. They, amen. they, they say, Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. God protects us. God protects us. I told you that mercy, mercy runs its course. And because God protects us, we ought to praise God. And we ought to praise God in the midst of his protection, even when things are not going the way we ask him to put it. Even when we're not getting what we want, we ought to still praise him because God has protected us enough just to be here to praise him. Yes, thank you. So God protects yes. us, and then God gives us our provision. God gives us our provision. The provisions that we have, the opportunities we have, were given and granted to us by Almighty God. Yeah. Somebody needs to stop momentarily to tell our children 
life for us hasn't been this way always. We, we need to tell our children that somebody took lashes on their back. Somebody took a bullet to their head. Somebody took a rope around their neck just so you can vote. Our children need to know that life hasn't been this way always. They need to know that, that our four parents got sick and tired of being sick and tired to the point that they kept right on pushing. People have laid the foundation for us. Don't tear up the foundation. Somebody need to tell our children that people are, are standing and people are kneeling and we are kneeling and standing on their backs. God said, I'm going to be self-made for nothing. And he's both of them. A self-made nothing. God has placed people around you to bless you. God has Allow people to suffer on your behalf. Rights that you have, you don't have to have them. Matter of fact, stuff that you got at the house, folks sacrifice for that. Let me just tell you, I'm, I'm just telling you this. I know mama's going to pull this up later on if she's not watching it. She doesn't put it up later on and, and she's not watching it, so today going to send it to her. <laughs> mama worked the crazy out of me this week. I have not, I have not cut so many tree branches, pulled so many sticker bushes, wrestled with so much poison ivy in all my days. And this is after my mother-in-law worked the heck out of me. And I understand that I have to work because I'm standing on their shoulders and our parents' shoulders, our fourth parents' shoulders. So we have to work because they work. Yes. Yes. Right. I've seen mama come home so tired. I've seen daddy look like a dust monkey, mm -hmm. a grease monkey, yes. just so we can make in meats. Growing up on a plantation, I saw it happen. How 13 year old boys were called grown men boys and talked down to him. Thank God for my daddy. He wasn't putting up with that. I know that's right. Well, I said, hey, right. hey, that, that tractor is stuck across the field. I want you to go out there and, and get it. He said, you go out there and get it yourself. <laughs> I guess that's why I get a little bold, boldness from. All right, all right. We have to understand that people have been disgraded, people have been destroyed, people have been devastated just so we can be where we are. And people are still taking stuff so we can make it. Don't take what you have for granted. Other people have taken the licks for you. Verse 13 says, then one elder asked the question saying to me, he asked the question, he says, who are these arrayed in white robes? Where did they come from? And I said to him, you know. John says to this angel, you already know what the deal is. Why are you asking me what the deal is? And he said, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and who have washed their robes and made them white with the blood of the Lamb. I told you that God protects us. God offers provision for us. And he does it over and over again. So my, my next point is, God's blessings are perpetual. God's blessing goes on and on. That's why we can't discount, and I heard Brother Miles address it this morning, that's why we can't discount our salvation. You saved, you're born again. You are saved and born again perpetually. You are saved and born again from now on. You are, you are made over again from now on. You are different. Yeah. You're on your way to heaven. You're born again. You, uh, this new birth experience is a one-time event. But sanctification takes place every day. You have to get it right with God every day. Uh, Mary Lee Clark, my, my, one of my babysitters back home, would, would sit us in the bed and look boys, and she would look dead in the eye and say, you ought to make sure that you had, ask God for mercy every day. Every day. 
And my babysitter said to me that you need to make sure you have, you have that you ask God to have mercy on you every day because you committed something. You done something. You felt some kind of way. The babysitter said you ought to ask God to have mercy on you. All right. All right. Because our frail minds, yeah. our frail hearts get to a point in our lives where we think we got it going on when we really not. We have to ask God to have mercy on us. Salvation is perpetual. God's blessings are perpetual. It goes on and on and on when we don't deserve it. You don't deserve what you have. God gave it to you. His grace and his mercy. So they're crying out hallelujah. They're crying out amen. They're crying out blessings and glory and wisdom. And it gives us an indication how we ought to approach God. Mm -hmm. It gives us, we're not there if we're saved. We won't be there. But but the, the fact of the matter is, it gives us an impression on how we ought to approach God. He's not the man upstairs. That's right. That's right. He's not my dude. Mm -hmm. He's not, you know, somebody up there somewhere. He is God. And we ought to approach him as God. And we ought to honor ourselves before God. Jesus said it like this. Hallowed would be your name, God. Yeah. Blessings and glory to you. Honor and power to you. Might to you. Hallelujah to you, God. You are the great God. You are the great king. The earthly way of seeing that is that when your child comes to you, they don't tell you, you just an old run-down man, dude. That's <laughs> Come to you and your child says, you're the greatest dad in the whole wide world. Mama, you are, you are the greatest. There's no mama like me. Brace yourself. They're about to ask for something. <laughs> and Jesus said that's the, that's the way we ought to approach God. We ought to honor God, give him glory, and make sure that we understand and that God's will ought to be done in our life regardless of our will. Glorify him. So the angels gives us a peek on how we ought to glorify God. Then when the angels ask the question, who are these? You know, and these are the ones that have come out of the great tribulation, have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb have made their robes white. It takes Jesus' blood to cleanse us. It's Jesus' blood that makes us whole. It's Jesus' blood that, that changes our hearts and our minds. We wonder why people are acting a fool and why people are doing crazy stuff and why people are killing people. It's because they're living a life without Jesus. When you have Jesus, your mind is changed. When you have Jesus, your Facebook changes. When you have Jesus, your Twitter account changes. When you have Jesus, your YouTube account changes. If you don't believe me, ask an employee. They'll tell you a minute, we, we went on your social media. And you're not a good fit. And you can say all you want to. They got to accept me like I am. And they can't discriminate. Now, they don't discriminate. They just call them their personal life. When you have Jesus, the Lamb of God, you are purified. You are made different. Verse 15 says like this, therefore they are before the throne of God and serving him day and night in his temple. It is an indication to us today that we ought to be holy regardless. We ought to be serving and praising God at all times. Let me tell you, one time I was at a, at a grocery store far away from home. I figured nobody would know me. I just really wanted to give them a piece of my mind. I just really wanted to tell them some things. But then I realized I ought to serve God whether people are looking or not. I ought to worship him whether people are looking or not. I ought to praise him whether people are looking or not. Regardless of where you go, you ought to represent God now. Represent him well. Be be who you are at church. Be who now, I, I better take that back because some people ain't that clean at church either. I was at a church one time and I was talking to this lady about her life and how she dealt with a child. I was talking to her and I was associate minister there 
And, and she just, she used some long words and some short words. And it got back to the deacon in charge of, of Christian education. It got back to him. He walks up to me and he said, did she really cuss you out? I said, like a seaport sailor. He said, well, I'm going to remove her from Sunday school teacher. I said, well, you got to remove our six others too now. Because you cannot, you cannot base people on when they lose it on that one moment. But what I said just got under her skin. What I said just caused her to go flat off. And I just had to sit there and take it. What we need to understand, we have to be the same person regardless of what's going on around us. The Bible says that, that, that these, these angels, these living creatures, these 24 elders praise him day and night, worshiping God, serving God. You ought to have a missionary journey every day. You ought to go help somebody. You ought to work for God. You ought to, you ought to demonstrate your love for God. I was so embarrassed one day I was standing in line and there was a woman in line and her daughter was giving the cashier the blues. The woman was so cool, she was so spiritual, and then I could hear her, I could listen to her sing every time I go to her church now. But her daughter just went flat off. I almost wanted to call the cops myself. I thought it was about to get violent. But you have to honor God. And that woman was honoring God even though she couldn't shut down her child. Let me tell you, my mama still shut me down. And I'm almost 60. Mm -hmm. When I say almost 60, I'm past 59. Mm -hmm. And mama doesn't even have to say anything. She just looks. Look. Mm -hmm. And when she looks, I don't know, sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing, but whatever I'm doing, I stop. That's right. That's right. Cold turkey just quit. Mm -hmm. My mama didn't have to take off work to come to school. Daddy didn't have to take off work to come to school. So daddy made a promise. He said, let, let, let me tell you something. If you go to jail for stealing, if you go to jail for drugs, and they, they call me, I ain't coming. Mm -hmm. But when I do finally make up my mind to come, I can't tell y'all what daddy exactly said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you the exact words. It wouldn't be fitting for the set. Mm -hmm. But daddy said, when I finally make up my mind to come, and you look at them, those bars and see me out there, you're going to say, please don't let this yeah. Don't let him in here because he's going to kill me. I'd rather stay locked up. That's when you can whoop your children. And the law will come and watch you whoop them. And when, and he who sat on the throne dwell among them. It's a good thing to have God dwell among them. He dwell among them, and they shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore, and the sun shall not strike them by day. The King James says by day, so that's how I learned it. Strike them by day, nor in the midst of, nor the heat. Why? For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water. Jesus said to the woman at the well that I am living water. And once you get a hold to this living water, you will thirst no more. Jacob well is fine for the past, but now you met Jesus. The Bible says that when you meet Jesus, that you won't suffer with the sun. See, they were going through some things. And let me tell you, we go, if you let me give you an alert. If you haven't awakened yet, we are going through some things. Yeah, yeah. Some things that we've never been through before. But Jesus says to these tribulation saints, he says to them, you will hunger no more. Yeah. In Acts chapter 6, I mean in, in Revelation chapter 6, it says they will hunger. Mm -hmm. It says you will be no more thirsty. And the sun won't beat you up anymore. The heat won't damage you anymore. Because you will be under the wings, the leadership of the great shepherd. And this shepherd will make sure that you get a taste of the living fountains of water. The last verse, last part says this. And God, 
will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Even though we're not here, even though we're not in the text, we have a God who will wipe away all tears. If you're suffering, he can wipe away all tears. If you're in pain, he can wipe away all tears. God, God is able to do things with us. He gives us our provision and his blessings are per perpetual. They go on and on and on, even though we don't deserve it. I'm looking forward to the day that God will wipe away every tear. There will come a day that weeping will cease from trouble. The weary will be no more. But you must be. You have to be. You got to be born again. You must believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, on a tree, Jesus gave his life. A voluntary life for you and for me. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died with you in mind over 2,000 years ago. Yes, Lord. He gave up the ghost on that cross over 2,000 years yes, ago. Lord. He died between two thieves over 2,000 years ago. Yes, Lord. They took him off the cross, took him off the stick, took him off the tree. Laid my Lord and your God in a barren tree. It was a borrowed tomb because it didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb because the Bible says under that third day morning, he got up with all power. All power in heaven and earth in his hand. Having mercy on us. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to get to know this Jesus. He's the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. His name is Jesus. Jesus the Christ. He died for you. He was buried for you. He rose for you. And you can receive him today. Just trust the story. It is this story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection that will get you to heaven. It is this story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection who will sanctify you. The angels had it right. The angels said, all power, all glory, all honor, salvation belongs to him who sit on the throne. And it comes to us by way of the Lamb. Jesus himself. The door is open. take you to heaven when you leave here. Just say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name. Amen. We believe that you honestly prayed this prayer, inviting Jesus into your life. You're born again. And now you can celebrate with the angels and say, Salvation belongs to him who sits on the throne. And it belongs to the Lamb, Jesus the Christ you're here and you're listening today and you don't have a church home or you're in between church homes, 
I recommend the New Beginning Church. Everybody needs a good church home. Will you come? And if you're listening by way of internet and you want to get to know more about this church, inbox us and let us know. We'll be glad to let you know more about the New Beginning Church, 4251 Zero Mile Road, Eastern Texas. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity. Lord, we ask you to bless this word, that this word will travel. That men, women, boys, and girls will recognize the word. And that they will be encouraged to get it right with you, Lord. We thank you now. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Come to Jesus. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We ask you to bless us as we give. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God. Thank you. 
Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want everybody to turn and look toward the back. Gavin Malo is back there. He is the one that's running our, our system today for our PowerPoint. We want to thank God for Gavin Malo. Amen. Hallelujah. We're always glad when, when young men and, and young ladies get involved in ministry. Uh, Sister, Sister Lou Matthews is, is not young, but we want to thank God for her. She looks young, but I know better. I know better. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank all of you who make ministry go global. Thank you so much for your work behind the scenes. I wanted to pause right here and thank those who are doing a great and excellent job in, in the rear to make sure that those who are not able, I didn't say don't come, I said not able to come, those who are not able to come to, to participate in our service. Amen. Well, we thank God for them one more again. Thank God for who, 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 who. Our prayer list, our prayer list is, um, is next. Our prayer list, we're praying for Sister Cora Woods. We're praying for Brother Warren, Warren Gavin, and family. We're praying for the NBC Church, the New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church, the New Beginning Church. We're praying for you. We're praying. We're praying for you. We're praying for students, teachers, principals, and safety in school. We're praying. We're praying that God continues to bless our school system, our superintendents, uh, staff, janitors, bus drivers, that God will continue to, to bless our school system. Those who, who cook, those who intervene in school, we pray for God's safety in school. We're praying for Audrey Brownlee. Uh, we're praying for Cheryl Burney. We're praying for Omar Gavin. We're praying for Jimena Ortiz. We're praying for Joe Nathan Brownlee. We're praying for Ed and Emma Brannon. Uh, Ed and Emma Brannon just celebrated, I think, 45 years. 45 years of marriage. That's a good place to clap right there. That's a good place to clap. Amen. We're praying for them. We're praying for Megan Davis and Amity Tifana. We're praying that God continue to bless these. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that the affection and fervent prayers of the righteous will avail much. We pray for these that names we've called and so many that we have not called. We ask you to bless in the name of Jesus. Heal, touch, and deliver as only you can. Go with us, Father God, and bless us to be comfort to them. We ask you to bless our senior citizens and our youth and young people. We pray for guidance and instruction, Father, for our young adults. We ask you, Father, to continue to wrap your arms around us. And bless us, Father God, to, to uh, serve, celebrate who you are and bless your name. We ask you, Father God, to bless our church. And bless us to continue to be a beacon light to shine in a dark and dismal world. We pray, Father God, that you bless every person that's not in church, that they will get back in church. For your word says in Hebrews, Father God, that we ought not forsake the assembly. Some people have, but to come together and iron sharpens iron. We thank you, Lord. We pray that you bless, heal, touch, and deliver as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. It's now time for communion. Amen. It's that moment where we we uh, bless of God to partake of communion. Jesus has blessed us through his blood, through his death, there in his resurrection. And so we come today to partake of communion with him. I know some would say it's the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Supper. But the Bible says, for as often as you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. So I ask each person to turn their hearts toward Jesus' arrest in the garden. Jesus being put on trial, 
and Jesus being murdered on a skull hill called Calvary. We're going to turn our hearts toward what he has done for us. For what he has done for us, we couldn't do for ourselves. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we come now thanking you for this privilege of communion. We ask you to bless us as we come to partake. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, that nothing stands between us and receiving this communion. That we would not drink damnation unto our soul or eat damnation to our soul. We ask you to bless us now. Forgive us. Now we ask you to bless the table. We thank you for the one who fixed it. We thank you for the one who died for it. Now, Lord, we ask you, Father, to bless us. Bless this table that we will be refreshed and we will remember what Jesus has done for us on Calvary. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.
It sells forth my death and my suffering until I come again. He broke the bread, he prayed over it, and he said, eat ye all. And he poured wine in the cup that represents his blood. And he said, this is the blood of the New Testament for the remission of your sins. Drink ye all of it. You would pass an empty toward the wall, and you will be served. I know it was the blood. Amen. I know it was the blood for me. The blood that I was born. He died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me.